Live from San Francisco, California, The Cube, covering Mark Logic World 2015. Brought to you by Mark Logic. Now, here are your hosts, Jeff Frick and Jeff Kelly. Welcome back, everybody. This is Jeff Kelly. We are live on theCUBE at MarkLogic World 2015. Uh, here in Silicon Valley, I'm joined by my co-host for the rest of the day, Jeff Frick. Uh, Jeff, thanks for joining us. John uh, had to head up to San Francisco for some very important business, so I'm happy to have Jeff here with me for the rest of the day. Uh, we're here for, with our next guest, Mark Unak, He's Chief Technology Officer at Codified. Mark, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you guys for having me. Well, thanks so much for coming on. So tell us a little bit about Codified. I understand your, your, your whole reason for being is to make it easier to find product content. Tell us a little bit about it. We're helping e-commerce make, make products findable. You know, I think we've all had that experience where we've gone and entered in something that we want to find and we either can't find it or we get too much. And, and you know, people being squirrels, uh, they give up really easily if they can't find what they're, what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. So the findability problem is first of all what we're trying to do. And then second of all, we're trying to help retailers expand their product catalog, get data to the market faster, mm -hmm. and really offer more product. Mm -hmm. Well take us, uh, to, take us back to the kind of the origins of Codify and tell us a little bit about your background and uh, kind of how you've gotten to this point. Well, I used to be CTO for a really large uh, software firm called Amdocs. Um, uh, Amdocs was the billing system for AT&T. Used to be 20% owned by AT&T. Uh, we, I was responsible for the Amdoc side of building Uverse, and what we provided to, to uh, AT&T was a centralized product catalog for all of their wireless and wireline services. And as a result, I got into this product catalog type of, of working where we try to disseminate product information around the whole organization. Mm -hmm. uh, common, you know, common product catalog, common product definition. Codified was really a very interesting play in that they've had great relationships with customers, Granger, Motion, Ace Hardware, Home Depot, and been helping them get their product data fixed up, but really they ran into a technology issue in that they could make better data, but the, the technology couldn't take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. So they, I came and joined the team about a year and a half ago, and we, we built two new products that can really take advantage of better data. Mm -hmm. and, and make it usable by these e-commerce sites. Mm -hmm. so, so walk us through that. I mean, why has it been so difficult traditionally to find content on a retailer's site? I've been through that experience. You just find too much, you find too little, or in my case, I think I, I might be missing something. Well, here's the, here's the problem for the relational versus XML world. In, in a relational world, you're trying to find the commonalities, and in really, when you look at product data, look at a screwdriver versus a bathtub, Really, the only thing that's common is brand, price, and description. All the other parts of what the, you know, the description, all the attributes of those products are completely different. Mm -hmm. And so what we needed to do was go to an, an XML model where we could have unlimited attribution and separate attribution for every product. Mm -hmm. A relational database, we would be doing hoops you know, to get to that kind of model. So an XML database was really essential to making that work. And second of all, most of the databases, or the search engines that are out there right now, specifically like the one that Oracle has, and DECA, can only have 48 global attributes to be searched on. Mm -hmm. So since they're global, they have to be common across all the products. If I'm looking for a cast iron bathtub that can hold 100 gallons of water, how does that have anything to do with a, with a bath towel? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it really doesn't. And how do, you, how do you separate those types of searches and make them meaningful? One of the things we always show our customers is you know, how bad their websites are. The other day I, I was at a uh, <laughs> meeting a with CDW, $12 billion company, $3 billion on their website. Their bread and butter is selling laptop computers. We sat there with them and we entered in 17 inch INCH laptop computer and zero computers came up. We, we typed in 17, zero. zero. <laughs> when we typed in 17 inch how many, laptop. How many SKUs do they have in their real inventory? 10,000. <laughs> and it's good we, we typed in 17 inch laptop, just took the computer off, and we got backpacks and a privacy filter. So that's the state of the search, of the search engines today. Uh, you know, you can use a lot of examples. Another one, we went to a retailer, typed in classic fit swimsuits, and we got men's suits. So, so you know. 
So to talk about how you're actually solving that problem, what, what are the attributes of, of our project, for example, which you built your product partly on, what does it bring to the table that allows you to make that a, a more accurate uh, search result? Or we've, the we've instantiated the metadata in the, the, the tag value pairs. So we understand what a product is through the, through the metadata, mm -hmm. and then the, each product can have an unlimited number of attribute tag value pairs for attributes. So we can understand in the context, if you search for one quarter inch slotted magnetic screwdrivers, those are all, we solve that looking at the metadata rather than looking through the SKUs. So let's say you have a million SKUs. Uh, Granger, for instance, has a million SKUs in their database. They have about 16,000 metadata attributes and products. If I can resolve and parse the item in the 16,000 and then go in and get the SKUs that are, I'm only interested in, then I have a much faster search and much more accurate. Now, are you using third-party data as well as part of building the attribution for these products, or is it, or you're still just focused on kind of the defined product description that, that exists kind of in the classic That's catalog? That's where our, our company comes along. We've been in this game for 15 years. We help them manage this data. Now, we bring the, the manufacturer's definitions in okay. with our bridge product and then transform the manufacturer's formats into the distributor's formats. Okay. So that's part of that heterogeneous merging of, of, of uh, unstructured data that goes on. That's the other product that we have. We call it the bridge product. Right now it takes about six months to get on a, on a distributor's website. Uh, we've lowered that down to about two weeks and, and the companies that are using it, uh, RS Components in England, uh, and some of their suppliers like Siemens and Schneider Electric are going through our bridge product to get the data up on their distributors' websites much faster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So have you done any kind of before and after analysis with some of your customers? Say, well look, if, we can, if, if we've increased uh, or improved the search uh, capabilities by X percent, that really leads to X percent more business. We think that it's increased by 5%. You know, mm -hmm. we have two customers using search right now and you know, we, we see them really improving their, their revenue. Mm -hmm. Now, it's going to take a lot of more time for us to get really good statistics, but we see positive numbers already. So, that's what we think. Mm -hmm. Now, a 2% increase in sales, or a 5% increase in sales can be a big deal for a company. Well, sure, yeah, for a big you're, number. You're starting with a, with a big number, 5% of that is, is, is impressive, right. and especially in you know, at retail when you're dealing with you know, razor thin margins and you're, you're really, the competition is just so intense. A 5% is actually quite a large number. That's right. Um, and how are you measuring that in terms of abandoned carts or abandoned well, searches we know that, or well, abandoned yeah, drops? Yeah, it's abandoned, or... abandoned sessions. Okay. So what we know is, is that on the average, if a person a person interacts with the website with eight events, eight times, and if they get to that point without finding what they want, they're gone, mm -hmm. usually eight, on average. And we find that we're, we're actually finding the product within that eight number much faster, you know, within, we're kind of like at the six, and it, by that, we, we, we're saying that we're keeping people in session. Okay. Mm -hmm. Our sessions are longer, people actually find products, and with a longer session, we, you know, we think that they're, they're buying more. And then do you also tie into recommended alternatives yes, and recommended have, partner and pairs and you know, try to increase the value? We have a new recommendation engine. It's not like the Amazon one where people who, who looked at uh, plasma TVs also looked at beanies. Right. Um, the idea is, is to provide what, uh, to give the merchandiser the ability to define what things that they want, you know, what are equivalents, mm -hmm. functional equivalents. So let's say that you have a quarter inch tip screwdriver you can use whatever attributes you want to say what the functional equivalent of this screwdriver is and offer alternatives or even upsell. So in this case, we would find a screwdriver that you're looking at and offer a set mm -hmm. that includes that functional equivalent. Mm -hmm. So with the process of, of recommending a functional equivalent, you can either offer them something that's your brand name, like you know your own generic, or you can offer them something that has a more higher margin. Mm -hmm. And that's a business decision that your, that's a, your clients and We're giving make. the distributor the ability to merchandise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, when you go into some of your your newer clients and you see kind of the, you mentioned CDW, you see the, the environment that they've got now. Um, what's it like in order to actually make the ch make the change? Or I mean, it, it, we hear a lot about, you know, is, is, is it a rip and replace situation or is it a uh, gradual uh, improvement of existing capabilities. How do you go in and actually make it happen without completely disrupting the way they're doing things? So usually these large companies have both an internal and external search engine. One for their customer service staff and one for their external. We've been win winning on the internal uh, search engine. 
the one that supports the customer service. Mm -hmm. So that's where we've been implementing our stuff where we, we can, you know, basically at some of these places they have print catalogs in front of them because the search engine can't find anything. So we've been replacing that internal search engine. We're hoping that when people get really comfortable with us that we can take them to the, you know, to the outside search engine. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your relationship with Mark Logic. We're here at Mark Logic World. There's um, several hundred people here, Jeff. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you guys work with them and your partnership. We're a customer. Uh, you know, it took us a whole two weeks to uh, come to our agreement with them. Mm -hmm. I think I was. I still pe people talk to me about being the fastest sales effort that they ever had. So. Uh, uh, we knew what we wanted. You know, we're, we've, most of our people have been around the block. We, we were looking for an XML database. This was the best XML database we could find. We had both search problems and, at, you know, uh, what we call the acid problems. You know, problems of doing large volumes of data conversions. So, between the two, MarkLogic had fit those requirements, and you know, it was a marriage made in heaven for us mm -hmm. at this point. So no accident, you're from Chicago, Sears from Chicago, the original catalog. <laughs> Seagulls, uh, Sears, <laughs> Montgomery Wards, uh, you name it, you know, Chicago had catalogs. Yeah, exactly. So there, is there any uh, tie back to that from back in the day or it just happens to be yeah, uh, where you get some great, great talent? Um, you know, I, I worked on one catalog project when I was a kid. Uh, uh, we worked at the Sears catalog. You know, the Sears catalog was still up and running when I first started out. Um, they had giant databases. I, I think that what we knew going into this was that the size of the databases were going to be enormous. Yeah, it's interesting. So what's on your horizon, I mean, that you can share with us? I mean, what are you looking to do with some of the capabilities, not just MarkLogic, but generally, um, you know, always, I'm sure you're always looking to, to help your clients in new ways. What's kind of top of mind for you, and what are you looking forward to in the next 6, 12, 18 months? You know, I, I think that what we're bringing to the table now that we're actually can truly define product information. You know, everybody's kind of gone down the big data customer behavior type of you know area. You hear people talking about, oh, how the customer you know did this or the customer did that. You know, a lot of the Cognos type of talk is around modeling the customer, but it's all been done in a vacuum without understanding what the customer was trying to buy or what features of the product that really was of interest. Mm -hmm. And I think what we bring to the analytics part of it is the is the broad broad product information that could then marry with the customer and really understand why you know buying behavior mm -hmm. and what features, what products, what you know the way to merchandise and how that really is going to work. Is now you can really say I'm in an aisle, you're in an electronic aisle in a store. I can show you what's around you in that aisle by giving you recommendations, and I can tell you specifically what these products are because you can find them. So now that now that data of why you made that buying decision is going to be more exposed, mm -hmm. and we can you know we as merchandisers can then go back and try to influence your behavior. Mm -hmm. Do you think retailers generally are understand the the potential yes. of all this new data? I mean, it's yes. been a, you know, we've been hearing it in the media for a while, so I'm thinking they're starting to get it. But where do you see them in terms of maturity of understanding what's possible and actually taking steps to change their culture to take advantage of it? Well, they've had such broad, they've been painting with a roller for, for the last, you know, when you go to a website, you see big banner ads, and that's about all they can merchandise with. Now they can get, with this product data and with these tools that we're providing, they can get down to very fine-grained, you know, product attributes that they can say, we know that this is what's, you know, important, this is what's really being sold, what people are being are buying, and they can start promoting those actual product attributes. So this gives them fine-grained ability to tune their product catalog. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, well, we're just about out of time, so I want to give you the last word. I mean, what's your thoughts on the show here today? Um, kind of your relationship with Mark Logic. I mean, what's, what are you taking away from this event? I'm really impressed with how many people and how many different things are going on. You know, there's a lot of people doing a lot of really fun computing, and it's always good to hear other stories and other use cases of how the product is being used. It opened my eyes, some of these things, about how people are using the heterogeneous data. So. I have issues with content management systems. I need to merge video, I need to merge pictures, I need to merge rich text, and I've heard other people talking about those same issues, and it's, it's, it, it, it was an eye-opener for me, too. Oh, fantastic. Well, awesome. Mark Unack from Codify, thank you so much for joining us on theCUBE. We appreciate it. We'll hope we'll, we'll see you back here uh, next year at Mark Logic World. Thank you. Thanks for watching, guys. Stick around. We'll be right back right after this with our next segment. Uh, we're here live at Mark, Mark, Mark Logic World 2015. <laughs>